Lady Gaga. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you today? How are you? Well, I'm okay, but you owe me 70 bucks. $70? <laughs> That's a lot. Why? what I do? Well, you were on time, first of all, calling, and you're Lady Gaga, and I just assumed because you're Lady Gaga, you were going to be late, so I just bet one of my co-hosts mm-hmm. that you were at least going to be seven minutes late, and I was going to give her $10 for every minute, and you showed up early, and now I owe her 70 bucks, which means you owe her 70 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, well, sorry. I guess you shouldn't. People shouldn't make assumptions about me. <laughs> Gaga, I had your back. I knew you'd be on time, and I just want to personally thank you for my seventy bucks. You're very welcome. You should. You can go get a really nice dinner. I know. With seventy bucks. Shoot, are you kidding me, girl? I'm gonna buy. Dinner. I'm buying a pair of shoes. That's going to shoes. Oh yeah, that's that's very that's. She just got disconnected. They're on an international phone. That's why. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, let me just give her a quick call back. Hold up. Okay. I was like. Oh, no. Flashbacks of Adam Levine. It's happening again. It's happening again. Way too cool for that. I agree. Are you all there? We are here. Are you? Hey, sorry. I don't know what happened. That's okay. We're a little shell-shocked. We thought (laughs) we got hung up on by Adam Levine. And and Coldplay. And Coldplay over the last couple of months. So we thought maybe we already offended you so badly that you hung up (laughs) on us. No, (laughs) no. No, that did not happen. No, don't worry. Now she's really excited for the interview, though. <laughs> yes, no, it's okay. It's okay. People can be sensitive. I'm not terribly sensitive. People say things to me all the time. Lady Gaga hanging out with the Burt Show. Have you ever hung up in the middle of an interview or just gotten up in the middle of a TV interview and said, that, I can't do this anymore? I do sometimes. I mean, not recently. Recently, things have been really great. Everyone's been really excited for me to come back. But, yes, I mean, I mean, if, if an interviewer is really negative or trying to bait you with something really negative, I mean, that can be really – because I'm, I'm a really positive person. And it. it just – you know, things in the media have really veered towards negativity, and I just try to keep it really positive. And so if someone's being that way, I, yeah, I might – I might leave, but I'll do it in a polite way anyway because <laughs> my dad's probably in the next room and he'll let me if I'm not polite. Okay, I'm going to do this in the most positive way possible then, okay, because I felt like – the night at, or the morning after your VMA performance, I felt like America got it wrong. Like, I felt like it was a great performance. The song was great, and it was artistic, and I know that's super important to you. But I felt like the country was focusing more on your ass than anything else. <laughs> and I was wondering if you kind of felt like the same way. Like, that's not what this was about at all. Well, I mean, to be fair, they always focus on the wrong thing, you know, and – um I I don't know. I I was really happy with the way that the performance was received because I don't really pay attention to, um, uh, I don't know, I guess when you say America, are you referring to, like, journalists or blogs or or things like that? Yeah, I think probably the press. I'm much more focused on, like, my Twitter feed or um, if you look online at uh, searches and things like that. You know, that's really where you can tell if people liked it or not or – if the song spikes on iTunes, you know, these are the sorts of things that are much more telling. So I just try to focus on that stuff. But, yeah, people were talking about my tushy, but it serves <laughs> me right. I mean, I took my tushy out at the end of the performance. So what do I expect? Now, well, she's been I, working hard on that tushy. Good. And yeah. she should have. But, you know, that moment in the show was really meant for me to say to my fans and to the world, you know, I mean, it was inspired by the the birth of Venus, the painting, mm-hmm. and it was meant as a way for me to say, like, I'm taking it all off for you. I want you to see the artist underneath. Here I am. Here I am for you on this stage. I live for your applause. So, you know, I think that as long as I keep performing uh, live and keep doing interviews, I just keep hammering that message home, and eventually they won't write about my tushy, and they'll <laughs> write about my talent. <laughs> well, I, I, there is one tushy question that is bothering me, and did you, before yeah. before you sat down in that arena seat, did you throw down a piece of tissue paper, <laughs> or... Some- <laughs> 
<laughs> you know that's a disgusting no. inter- that's a disgusting arena and you're I sitting did not. Okay. And was that a cloth seat or a leather seat not that there's a right answer you know if i could tell you the number of arenas i've been to around the world and the number of stadiums that i've played my tushies hit quite a few seats <laughs> and i can say that or, you know i have a good relationship with arenas they're not it's not a toilet it's just it's very different yeah but this very is different. this is a bronx seat and that might be totally <laughs> different uh, well it was brooklyn but that's I'm right from new york and I lived in Brooklyn for a really long time. And if I could tell you the number of times that I rolled down the street, <laughs> rolled down the street in my short shorts. I mean, I guess everybody in their hometown feels comfortable. And I was having such a good time that night. I mean, it was, that's what pop music's all about, mm-hmm. is having fun and sharing your expression with everybody. So I just was having a really good time, especially you know, when NSYNC came out all together, I was really excited about that. <laughs> were, you, is it, were you geeking out uh, about NSYNC when you were younger also? I mean, was this like, were you as excited as the rest of the country? Yeah, because I was 14 when they were, when they first came out and they were really big. So I was sitting in the audience and I hadn't seen them live in like such a long time. So I was, I was so happy. And I think I never imagined that they would be performing at the VMAs again. So it was a dream come true for me to be on the same stage as them. We had uh, J.C. Chazé on yesterday, and he said that's there's a one in a million shot that they'll ever do that ever again. So that was a one-trick pony for those guys. Oh, well, that's sad. <laughs> well, I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll be on stage again. Lady Gaga hanging out with the Burt Show. Well, this is coming full circle for me because the first time I saw you perform, you were opening for New Kids on the Block when they came back for their first reunion tour. So I, to yeah. me, like, to, NSYNC to you is like new kids to me. And it's like that music, it takes you back. Like that's what's so powerful about music. Like I feel those same feelings I did when I was that little middle school girl. And it's such an incredible feeling. Yeah, it's really great. And, and it's also nice because that's the type of relationship I've always wanted to build with my fans. And I think my favorite part about, you know, being a pop star today is that, you know, my fans are really, really diehard and they're really super fan. And every year when I see them, you know, I see them all come together in this, in the arena and they've grown up a little bit and they've, you know, matured or they've become more, you know, secure in themselves. And they come there and they, they relive the past five years of their life for the night. And it's beautiful to watch. So, you know, I learned about super fandom through bands like NSYNC, and it's something, even though my show's a little more punk pop uh, than that, uh, that was really always the thing that drove me, is how do I give birth to the super fan? What is the connection that you have with your fans that some artists just can never really reach with their audience? What makes them so close and special? It's a, re- a really special relationship between the two of you. You know, I have always asked myself that question because sometimes it's very hard to put your finger on things like that. You know, I guess it's like if you're in love with somebody and you say, what is it that you love about them? It's really hard to list off all the things because you love so many and it's really not just one thing. It's the feeling that you get when you're with them. And I've come to realize, though, and especially since Art Pop has started coming out, like with applause, uh, what I'm realizing is that what the fans love about me the most is my passion. And mm-hmm. I've always been kind of a unretouched pop star. And I have such a raw passion for what I do, and they have such a raw passion for what they do. And when we come together, there's this explosion of love for music and art and fashion and technology and it bonds us together so even though I think I'll always be an outcast in pop music in a way because of them I have a lot of kids to sit at the table with you know they all come sit with me and we hang out together and we geek out on the things that we like the connection is real because if I was in high school with them or if I was in college with them we would really be friends They don't just like me because, you know, they like the music. Mm -hmm. They like me because they love everything about the lifestyle I live. Yeah, listening to you talk about your relationship with your fans, I do equate it to, like, them being your best friends. Do you ever become overwhelmed by trying to maintain that relationship? Because that's a lot of pressure. Well, no, because so much of what they want from me and what they love about me is my ability to inspire them. So I don't necessarily... 
I've never created music for other people, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I make it to make other people happy, but it comes from a place of inspiration that only I can know as the artist, and they're always looking to me to create that thing that they're going to love. So I don't feel pressure from them to be anything other than myself. And I say the same thing back to them every day. You know, I don't put pressure on them as a fan base to act any particular way. They, they're they amazing. That what they are is enough for me, and if I'm enough for them, then we will always belong together. See, I think that's exactly it. I think that's where the relationship is with your fans. I think that you're one of those friends that gives unconditional love, like there's an acceptance and I think they feel that with you. And I think that's really at the core of where that connection is. Yeah, we definitely accept one another. And they accept me, you know, for who I am and for the kind of art that I want to be. And I've never wanted to tailor my image or my music to fit on radio or to fit, you know, in the public. It's always a fight. And it's a fight every single album. And it's always been from the beginning. Even after all that success, it's always my dream to start as the underdog again. If you're not fighting for uh, anything, then the music is its not new enough. You have to create something that requires a battle. And or for me, that's what really turns me on as a musician. So they like that about me, and I love them for loving that about me. It's definitely scary. Uh, sharing your music with the world for the first time, but it's always a safe space with the fans because they don't have any judgment. They just will be there to throw paint and dance and, and have a good time, which is what I want to do. So do you feel like the song, when you wrote Applause, or not wrote, I should say, when you came out with Applause or with the whole album? I did write Applause. <laughs> do you still feel like you're an underdog with this song and with this album? Well, I, I feel like I always do that to myself, on sort of on purpose. You know, I mean, Just Dance, I was for sure an underdog. Bad Romance was like a lucky smash for me. I mean, and even though it never went, you know, number one in uh, the United States, it was still this massive moment for my career. But at the same time, you know, you can never really tell when a song that's that different is going to connect with people. That song was unlike anything on the radio at the time. And it's the same thing with applause. It's completely different. And the idea is to fight for something that's new so that I can hopefully change the landscape of radio again for myself and put these new records out and create a new vibe on radio and the clubs and in my shows. That's what my fans really like. They like to have a separate space, a separate lifestyle space where they can rejoice and be different. And that's what I want to create for them. The Lady Gaga joining the Burke Show. How did, does it hurt you, though, with these the fans that you consider friends, if maybe as you transition from one album to the next or one style to the next and continue to innovate, some of your fans might become not fans because they don't like the way that your new music sounds? Does that hurt you the same way that losing a friend would hurt you? Well, I mean, it's not. it doesn't really quite happen that way. I mean, definitely during Born This Way, a lot of people didn't understand all of the songs that I made on that album, and especially the, the fact that it was such a concept record about, you know, human rights and youth culture. It wasn't for everybody, but I made that record because I believed in the message, not because I want people to like me or buy my songs. I did it because I believe in what it stands for. So they all stood by me. I mean, I sold out a stadium tour after that record, even after all the criticism that it received. And that's the proof right there. The proof is that the fans show up no matter what, because they believe in, in me as a person. So uh, I think art pop more than anything is a celebration of their devotion to me and me wanting them to really have a good time for this album cycle. I really want them to dance and not think too much and just enjoy being young uh, because it, pop culture has become very complicated and negative and it's exhausting and it, it can be really boring at times all of the gossip constantly and mm -hmm. the dragging of female artists it's really at an all-time high so I want to create a separate space for them where they can go and not think about any of that because it has nothing to do with music and it has nothing to do with performance it's just really noise so the the show is the beautiful music of life. Come to the show and forget all of that, you know. Just dance and be yourself. So let me just uh, wrap it up by letting everybody know then that Art Pop's going to be in stores around the world on November 11th through Streamline Interscope Records. 
Uh, and you've got an interactive app that goes alongside the album, too, as well, right? Yes, it's awesome, and it actually has games on it, and it is for free. So if you go to the App Store, you can download the games on the Art Pop app for free, and you, then you can uh, download the music through the app. That sounds great. Uh, Lady Gaga, thanks for your time. I will expect my $70 in the mail over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Sounds like she's going to get right on that. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.